Right, let's have a look at this um, old car radio I found in the shed. Uh, it belongs to my girlfriend's uh, late father. And uh, it's circa 1986, it looks like. It's a Chinese, or is it Chinese? Taiwan, something like that. Yeah, Chinese made uh, radio, long wave, medium wave. Yeah, I think it looks like 87 on the uh, stamp on the back. It's been sitting in the shed for, oh, probably 10 years, 15 years, probably more than that, actually. I don't know if it works. I'm uh, just going to sort of give it a power up, see so if you can get any life out of it. Obviously, we've got connections on the back, but I'm not entirely sure what's what, so it's a bit of a lucky guess, really. Um, we've got an inline fuse here, so we're going to surmise that that's the supply. Uh, so we'll assume that's the supply. We'll connect that up to the uh, external supply. Um, what else have we got? We've got a black wire there, so as long as it's not made by Texas Instruments, we'll assume that the red lead is positive and the black lead is actually negative. So we'll connect that up to the power supply. That really leaves us with, um, that leaves us with, interestingly enough, one wire. Now, all I can assume is that because we've only got one wire left and it's um, it's a single-ended output with a capacitor coupled output stage. Well, it doesn't, it's not necessarily single output, but it's a single-ended output, but capacitive output stage. And our speaker connection would go between the chassis and this, uh, this connection here. So let's power it up and try it like in that configuration. At the end of the day, if it doesn't work and it blows up, doesn't matter really because it's never going to be used for anything it's not like a particularly good radio anyway um, I'll stick a lead in the aerial socket which is in the back here it's in the back just here plug an aerial lead in there just to see if we can actually receive anything it does power up it's only bodged in there but that will do so let's try it let's plug it in and see if anything happens Right, so this is, uh, oh, let's connect our speakers up first. So, okay, we're using the grey wire as one speaker connection. I've got our wires going to the uh, workshop amplifier speakers. And our negative connection, I'm going to put the chassis. Now, I need to keep an eye on current when I first power that, just in case it isn't capacitor coupled and that isn't the right connection. I don't want to start putting DC through speakers in the workshop because they are they're not blocked for DC let's click that up to the positive click this up to the negative just get a quick okay not drawing any excess current I don't even know it's turned on so okay should let's try it let's switch it on see if anything happens yep got a buzz So let's see if we can tune it. Pick up a lot of noise from something. Yeah, it works. Now we're using a, uh, a non-switched power supply at the moment, so it should. It shouldn't be too electrically noisy, but it's certainly pick up a lot of noise from something. All these good ideas and many more besides. Terms and conditions apply. Sign up to the Sun's all you now at DreamTeamFC.com. Sounds okay, actually. Bit harsh sounding, but let's try a long way. Oh, blimey! Let's see if we can get rid of this buzzing. It might be the lights. Let's try the lights out. And see what that does. No, it's not that. So there's something in here creating a lot of uh, RFI. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know what else it can be really. Everything else is off. So let's tune and see if we can find anything. Toxic rivalries between surgeons 
and its cardiac unit might have caused a rise in patient deaths. The leaked document calls for radical solutions to break up the current surgical team. Now what these radios often have is a strange IF frequency um, and I think that's set because they decided that a, a lower IF in a car radio was less susceptible to ignition noise. I'm not entirely sure if that's correct, that's what I read on the internet. Um, and it could be that because we're working in a sort of like a domestic environment now, that they pick up a lot more RFI from sort of 50 hertz stuff. I don't, I don't know. So let's just see if we can work out what IF frequency is actually using. So we're just going to tune off to a uh, a quiet spot, if I can, if there is such a thing. Okay, that's a fairly quiet patch there. Let's, let's go over to the, the uh, Roden Schwartz, you can see just in the background here. Let's see if we can swap the IF and work out what frequency we're working at. Oh no, it's 470. Okay, so the IF's actually at 470, which is unusual. These radios usually have a much lower IF. Yeah, there's the IF, and that can prove that by tuning, and not wherever I tune, the IF is coming through. So yeah, we've got an IF frequency of 470 kilohertz. Um, so let's pop the thing open and have a look, see what we've got. Well, that's what we've got inside. Not an awful lot, to be honest with you. Um, so we've got like looks like a maybe a three or four stage IF, um, long for long wave medium. No, three stage will be. Yeah, it looks like a three-stage IF. Um, using an output transformer over in the corner here and an IC, funny enough, which is uh, obviously maybe the detector or maybe the power... No, it's a power amplifier. You can see the heat sink on the end of it there. It's using tuning uh, slugs, uh, which most uh, car radios tend to use anyway. Uh, and not a lot inside, actually. There's a little bulb there. You can see glowing away. It's quite nicely built. Obviously a very budget sort of radio. But it's um it's sound quality for you know a medium wave and long wave radio is actually quite pleasant. Not a bad little radio. Um so yeah, I mean I mean I don't know I don't know what these things are worth now. I mean I know some people actually sort of are buying these old radios to put them in their uh, their old vintage cars to keep them sort of you know, sort of a, a decent and a matching radio. You know, if you bought a nineteen nineteen eighties sort of Metro or something like that, you might not even have got a radio, so you'd actually sort of go and buy it something like a cheap something, something like this to, to chuck in it. At least you had long wave and medium wave radio. Um, it wasn't really into the sort of mid 80s when you started to put sort of like decent FM radios in, and the stuff like the Alpine that used to come along, and uh, uh, lots of sort of you could buy Goodman's. I think I think one of my first uh, radios in my cars were Goodman's ones, you know, they were they were very cheap, but that's all I could afford at the time. Um, and having a, a decent radio, because my first car was a, a Mark One Fiesta that I bought off my dad, and it had a, just a long wave and medium wave Ford radio in it, and it was, you know, it was pretty awful anyway. I don't think it's even as good as this, to be honest with you. And uh, I soon updated it for an FM radio, and uh, it was great. You know, you could listen to FM and listen to your cassettes and everything like that long before sh um, compact disc was sort of readily available. So yeah, I mean it works okay actually. Oh, so that's a, just a brief look at the uh, little uh, long wave, medium wave, charming, Chinese, Chinese, Chinese radio.